Live now to City Hall where Deputy Mayor Jennifer McKelvey is making an announcement of, about the city's annual spring cleanup. Let's listen in. Our city crews will be out doing everything they can as part of our spring cleaning effort. And we've got help from the people of Toronto too. Every year, more than 100,000 residents roll up their sleeves and do a litter cleanup to ensure our city is clean and healthy. Cleaning up litter is something we can all do. It ensures the Toronto we enjoy today will be just as beautiful as the one our children will inherit tomorrow. Our city is filled with an abundance of beautiful, natural spaces. Our parks, our beaches, our public spaces are places to gather, to relax, to exercise, and to escape the hustle and bustle of our city life. And this is why we are asking everyone to give 20 minutes of their time on April 21st, 22nd, or 23rd to help keep our public spaces clean, green, and beautiful. You know the saying that many hands make light work. So, sorry, make light work. So I uh, call on your friends, call on your family, call on your neighbors, join and gather and clean a space that is important to you. Coming together for litter cleanup will make a real difference for the people of Toronto. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm pleased to announce that the city is beginning its annual spring cleaning blitz. Some of the staff that will be leading the city's effort to clean Toronto are here with us today. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. These hardworking staff will be responsible for the heavy lifting, including sweeping streets and laneways, vacuuming sidewalks, removing graffiti and abandoned bikes, pruning trees, removing illegal signs, and cleaning local benches and litter bins. This concerted effort will help shape a cleaner and greener Toronto, a Toronto we can continue to enjoy all year long. That's why on April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, I encourage you to join the spring cleanup. It's a great opportunity for you to join with your local community groups, businesses, schools, many of our city councillors are organizing cleanups, and of course, other, uh, all of our Toronto residents. Show our city some love, getting involved is easy, visit livegreentoronto.ca and register for your cleanup. I'll say it again one more time, livegreentoronto.ca so you can join us in all of the fun. I would now like to call on Councillor Cole, Vice Chair of the City's Infrastructure and Environment Committee to say a few words. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor McKelvey, and uh, great to be here with my colleague from the far west, uh, in Etobicoke, Councillor Amber Morley, who's very interested in cleaning her uh, beautiful green Etobicoke. Uh, yes, and uh, one of the reasons I think they asked me to speak is because I have this thing about litter and cleaning our streets and fixing broken windows. And you heard about my campaign to fix our litter bins, which we're working on. So this really, I know, at this time of the morning. This excites me, actually. <laughs> so I'm very excited. Uh, and I want to thank the frontline workers here. They don't get enough appreciation. They're on the sidewalks every day, on the curbs. They're the frontline cleaners that we need and we have to support. But they can't do it alone. We've all got to pitch in. It's great to see Mayor McKelvey said over 100,000 Torontonians pitch in every year for this litter cleanup. That is a great start, but we need another 100,000 to pitch in because everybody is really worried about this climate disaster crisis that we have. So it's wonderful to have that concern, but we've got to basically roll up our sleeves and deal with the climate crisis here locally. So that's why this litter day, clean up day, keep Toronto clean day, make Toronto clean day is so critically important to start locally. Pick up all that damn plastic that's in our parks and our sidewalks and our curbs. Don't just sit there or walk by the plastic. So we're giving you an opportunity to basically uh, walk the walk, talk the talk, and get everybody out there on this day where we clean up 
and we get rid of as much litter as we can because that litter is not just a passive piece of plastic or garbage. It all contributes to our climate crisis. So that's why this is an exciting opportunity. And, you know, choose your local park. Choose a local Main Street. Get your uh, friends together. Get your family together. Get your uh, school uh, together to clean up a local area. That's the challenge that Mayor Mc Deputy Mayor McKelvey has for us today. And as uh, I've noticed, Toronto has more than 11,000 garbage street bins and 10,000 more in our parks. And it costs the city about 16 million bucks a year to clean up litter. It's not an easy thing to do. And we've got some of the machine here, the machines here that you'll see. We've got the sidewalk uh, vac here, litter vac, the little one. Then we have the uh, small sweeper. Uh, this one here is for uh, bike lanes. And then we've got the, uh, the big mother here that is the uh, curb uh, lane sweeper. All part of the equipment the City of Toronto has all over the City of Toronto that their frontline workers use every day. And, uh, but we need more than machines. We also need you to come out and pick up your local litter. And uh, again, just to remind people, that we have a lot of work to do. This is not something that's just done once a year, but this day, it's Earth Day, uh, will be an opportunity for everybody to pitch in and help make our city cleaner and get rid of those uh, pieces of garbage, uh, debris that's everywhere, especially now when the snow melts. You can see it on our sidewalk. So again, uh, I just want to uh, say that uh, Let's spread the excitement about our local Earth Litter Day. Let's do something that will get us out in the streets, the sidewalks, the parks. Great exercise, great fun, great social activity. So let's get out there on our local Litter Day and make Toronto clean. And uh, again, exciting times, exciting days coming ahead. Thank you. I don't know if there was any questions. Deputy Mayor, the Executive Committee has uh, recommended the approval of the uh, TTC to unlock $15 million to put towards uh, the health and safety and security of the TTC employees and its customers. Um, what are you going to be saying to Council later on? And if this gets approved, how will those funds be used? So at Council this morning, we will have a presentation first by the TTC to talk about the additional safety measures that they have been implementing over the last few months. We also have there to answer questions Toronto Police and City of Toronto staff. They'll also be asked uh, how they are contributing to safety on the TTC. Uh, I don't have an intention to direct the funding that the TTC has. I think we have to ask the experts what they need and the experts on where they need that to be directed. But I think a theme you are going to hear coming out of this morning is that the City of Toronto needs additional funding from the provincial government and the federal government to address the very, very real issues in our city around homelessness and around transit. And I think you are going to hear that theme coming over and over again this morning because we were just shut out from the federal budget a couple days ago. And and I think that's very top of mind that we've been left in the cold by our federal partners. So I'm at the will of council on that one. Um, I think that what's coming before us will, will have some flexibility about where it's implemented. Every community across the city has a different appetite for this. They have different challenges. Speaking specifically to my community, uh, throughout the pandemic along the waterfront, we had problems with big parties. So I don't know that I'm really 
welcoming of opening that up right now to alcohol until we've gotten through that and we've seen how in a no COVID year people are behaving down at the waterfront. Um, I think that a lot of people want to see that if you have a picnic you can have a glass of wine. I think there's a lot of appetite for that to proceed but I think what we don't want is what we saw in the past where people rolled in big boom boxes and speakers and had big parties that left a huge amount of litter which is very relevant about what we're talking today. Left a big mess. In many cases left fires. I've heard stories about people walking on coals the next morning and they were still hot. So it's not a one size uh, fits all and I don't think you're going to see a one size fits all response from council today either. I'm wondering why that specific mechanism was chose. Uh, $15 million, that's a lot of authority to just place in the hands of the CEO. Uh, is there an, a reason why that was decided upon and, and do you think the council might change that? So the TTC board had a very fulsome discussion about this. Uh, so I'm ceding to their thoughts. They're the experts in this area. They did put, I believe, a few constraints on that. Uh, I'm not sure what will come out on the floor today, but I think we, as a council, need to listen to our experts. That's what we're planning to do in the questions this morning. There will be questions posed to Toronto Police. There will be questions posed to TTC. There will be questions posed to City of Toronto staff. Uh, but I think what we also need is all of us to speak with one voice today to say, yes, we know we want to do more. We know we need to do better, but for us to do that, we need the province to step up and we need the federal government to step up, and we're not seeing that right now. The Deputy Mayor, uh, there's been calls by advocacy groups that, uh, you know, this money could be better spent addressing the root causes of crime, in, including mental health and addiction. At the same time, there's other critics saying that part of this root causes is the, fails, uh, the failures of the justice system. There are reports that the alleged uh, killer o over the weekend of the 16-year-old boy was out on probation, uh, including for several violent offenses, uh, as, including a sexual assault on a Toronto woman just about two weeks ago. Uh, there's been lots of talk about judicial reform reform and bail reform. Do you think that something needs to be done at the provincial level to uh, deal with these kind of uh, issues when it comes to bail reform and not letting violent reoffenders out on bail? So the, gover the federal government is working on bail reform. I think we all want to see that. I think we want to see it happen faster and as fast as possible. I think we also need to look at what are the release plans for individuals. Uh, sometimes individuals are released on probation and maybe we're not having strict enough conditions placed on them to keep everybody safe. I think that what we have, ha what we've seen in the city right now on the TTC is, is an issue we're all concerned about, but it's important that we recognize that this is not just a TTC issue. This is a city-wide issue that needs city-wide response, and that means it also needs resources. Those resources need to come from the provincial government, from the federal government, and they need to be funding that addresses homelessness and addresses transit, and we're not seeing that. Okay. Thank you so much, and please make uh, Toronto cleaner and greener. <laughs> there we okay, go. that is Deputy Mayor Jennifer McKelvey speaking this morning at an announcement to remind people that in April there is the big annual spring cleanup here in Toronto. She commented once again on her disappointment that Toronto was, as she says, shut out of the federal budget when it came to funding for issues like the challenges in the city, including homelessness and safety on the TTC.